where's my paper? Did we move this? Yes. No. Nope. Yes. Perfect. Good. Everyone ready? Okay, great. Thank you all for coming out today. Today we're going to discuss our Operation ADC Express 2. Speaking today, needing no introduction, we have Chief Davis. We also have our Deputy Chief of Investigations, Eli Corey, our Captain Dana Robinson, our the Commander for our Cyber and Forensics Division, and our K-9 Delaware, and her handler, Detective Justin Urbaniak. Chief? Thanks, Director Hayek, and thank you all for um, covering this important news. I think one of the most important things a society can do, a school system can do, a government can do, and certainly public safety and police can do, is to protect our innocent children against predatory criminal adults who prey on their vulnerabilities. So when we conducted Operation ADC Express 2, and ADC stands for Adult Detention Center Express 2, and the reason why it's two is because we conducted a similar operation last year. Uh, we hoped we wouldn't find any predators out there who would intentionally interact with our undercover detectives posing as children. Um, we hoped no one would take it. We hoped no one was no one was out there, and we hoped that no one would interact with our with our undercover detectives. But they did. So you're going to hear from Deputy Chief Corey today about ten adults ranging in age from 22 to 44, who committed felony crimes because they uh, intentionally interacted with persons they believed to be children. In this case, 13 and 14 year old boys and girls were portrayed by our undercover detectives and they intentionally met with the undercover detectives for the purpose of committing an illegal sex act with a minor. Uh, that's a serious felony in Virginia as it should be. Uh, we take it very seriously, and uh, I'm sad to report the success of our operation. Uh, but I'm also <laughs> satisfied that 10 predators uh, are in jail this holiday season. It's one of those crimes when we charge, we never know the true impact of taking one of these predators off the street because ultimately uh, they offend again and again and again. And it's always been my experience that the only way to interrupt the criminal misconduct of these types of predators is to incarcerate them. So that's exactly what we did. Uh, you'll hear a little bit today uh, about Detective Justin Urbaniak and his electronic service dog, uh, Delaware. Uh, we're one of the only police departments in the country that has, uh, has rather an electronic service dog. So what Delaware does is he uh, searches for and is trained to search for electronic devices. Electronic devices are uh, really important to these predators because they store their sexual child abuse material on their cell phones, on their laptops, on their iPads, and when they store this illegal, illicit activities, their crimes, um, they, they hide these devices often. They hide them in their homes, they hide them in their cars, they, they hide them in their yards, they put them in all sorts of places in an effort to keep them away from law enforcement. And Delaware is one of the uh, rare dogs, and I'm told Delaware is an English lab, um, who can find these electronic devices. And Delaware did just that about a month ago in the case that you probably remember. It was widely covered involving the DC Chief Executive Officer, uh, Brian Dolan, in his arrest. So um, we want to highlight the work that, uh, that Delaware does and Detective Urbaniak, and it's a, it's a big commitment for our police department to, to train um, a, a service dog like Delaware, but unfortunately, it's, it's necessary. So we remain committed to uh, holding these lawbreakers. It's a unique type of lawbreaker, as I stated, holding them accountable for their crimes, their crimes against children, uh, Detective I'm sorry, Chief Corey will go over our relationship with the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. Uh, I encourage parents earlier today to visit that National Center for Missing and Exploited Children website. It includes uh, several uh, apps that parents should be aware 
uh, of if their children have these particular apps on their cell phones. So it's a really informative website. I encourage everyone to visit it. Um, now Chief Corey will go over the details of our operation, and then uh, he and I and Captain Robinson and Detective Urbaniak will stand ready to ask or answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Chief. And as the Chief said, uh, one of the most important things that we do as society, as a department, is to safeguard the children who live in our community. I remember, and you all remember, one of the most important lessons you learn as a child very early on is don't talk to strangers. And I think today, you talk to any kid, they're going to tell you, yeah, I know, I don't talk to strangers. But some children, it doesn't resonate the same way online. Don't talk to strangers online. That's why it's so important that we do things like Operation uh, ADC Express. This started on December 18th. It was a three-day operation by our child exploitation detectives. And they just went online to various forums to talk to people and to see who was out there. And quickly and unfortunately, people in that community, uh, online community, started <laughs> sexually um, soliciting uh, our detectives, thinking they were children. And at the end of that three-day operation, we had 10 people behind bars charged with 25 heinous felonies. Like the chief said, they range from 22 years old to 44 years old. They come from all walks of life, local people, and some as far away as Qatar. Uh, they're people who work in the tech industry. They're yoga instructors. They're journalists, construction workers every walk of life that you can imagine, unfortunately. And these heinous crimes carry pretty hefty um, charges and also convictions. Any one of these can go from anywhere from a few years in jail to up to 30 years in jail for each one. So I want to thank our child exploitation detectives. They are true professionals. They are true uh, experts in the field. This is tough work to do. Uh, but there's no one that I can think better than, than our detectives in our child exploitation unit. And they're doing it to safeguard our most important resource here in the community, and that's our children. Uh, I want to uh, take a moment to talk to the community about what you can do as a parent to uh, protect your children, because it is confusing. I didn't grow up with cell phones and social media, uh, but I think the most important thing that we can do as parents is to have those tough conversations with our children and get involved with what uh, things they're doing online, what apps they're using, what games they're playing, and who they're talking to. Because it might seem like it's just another person online or a friend that they're playing an Xbox game with. But these people are truly strangers that uh, we don't need to engage with and provide information to or meet in real life. Um, and if you want more information, we work very closely with the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. There's a ton of great information on how to safeguard your social media apps, your electronic devices online uh, on that website. So with that, um, I will turn it back over to the Chief. We'll take some questions and uh, go from there. Any questions? Paul Wagner? Looks like you're about to spit one out. These ten men actually show up in an effort to meet these uh, so-called children, and how did you know that they were going to? How did you know that it was them when they were there? Were they sending photographs to your detectives? So, um, great question, Paul. Not unlike other undercover operations where detectives pose uh, as other people, uh, a meeting location was agreed upon online. Um, we generally knew sometimes and specifically other times what the person looked like and we had a, a surveillance team set up at the agreed upon location, the meeting location, and in each and every case uh, we safely took the suspects into custody. Of the ten, one was armed with a firearm, um, the rest were not armed. Um, several of the defendants have, have similar criminal histories. But each and every case, we were able to identify the person who agreed to meet our undercover detective posing as a child at a location in Fairfax County. And, and each and every time, we took that, that person into custody. And were they always different locations? And was the location picked by the detective? 
So when they interact with each other, they can see uh, online how close they are to each other. Uh, so they pick a location nearby uh, and without disclosing the exact location, because sometimes we agree to meet suspects near places of business, and I certainly wouldn't want to name those places of business that might be uh, next to an adjacent parking lot. But we pick a familiar public space, and that's where the meeting typically takes place. And in this particular operation, that's where all the takedowns uh, took place as well. Uh, I'll say this, the detectives shared with me, because I find this fascinating work that they do. Uh, and it's very difficult work. Um, you know, the vast majority of these grown men who are really sick criminals uh, broke down in tears. Uh, they, they, they're professionals in a vast variety of, of uh, professions. Uh, a lot of them have wives, children, families, and, and now their lives as they knew them are, are over. But the life of a child that they either... Uh, plan to plan to uh, prey upon or would later prey upon are are saved. So it, it, it's tough, tough work that these detectives do. And if you can catch ten in three days, what does it say about the rest of the, yeah. the time? Yeah, F fish in a barrel. So fish in a barrel. Um, you know, our detectives are really careful during the operation to represent themselves as children. There's no gotcha game. Um, associated with this at all. Uh, the pictures that our detectives share with these predators are images of 13, 14 year old children. And they go an extra step and tell the, tell these defendants, I am a child. I am 13. I am 14. So there's, uh, there's no guesswork associated with, with this. They're, they're airtight uh, cases and investigations. Uh, I imagine a lot of these defendants will plea um, and hopefully some will enjoy some mandatory sentences. And do you feel fairly confident that you may have interacted with minors before? And this is the first well, just looking at the, the criminal histories associated with some of them, and I'm, I'm sure you guys have the capacity to look into to those criminal histories as well, Matt. Uh, you'll see that some have um, you know, been before our criminal justice system in the past for similar charges. Uh, and again, they're, they're offending again. So uh, the, the work remains in front of us. Uh, these operations uh, will increase in 2024. Um, it's the right thing to do for, for our families and for our children. And um, as Paul said, we, we could have another three-day operation starting this afternoon and probably get the same results. But we do it during the holiday season in particular because so many children are, are home from school. The parents still may be working or out of the house, so that leaves the child left to his or her own devices inside the home. And those apps that you, you saw that are displayed on the National Center for Missing and Exploiting Children's website are, are apps that uh, all parents should pay attention to. Um, you know, th there'll, there'll be a day and age when, when parents will be as familiar with these apps as their children. Um, I'm not. Uh, I venture to say that a lot of parents still didn't grow up in this social media age. So there's a big gap between what parents know about social media and these apps and what children know. Um, so it, we, we can't educate ourselves enough. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. This is a question for the captain, I guess. Uh, how long is the duration, would you say, on average between one of these initial contacts is made and when you're actually there in the parking lot taking this person down? It depends. It could be a matter of hours up to a couple of days until there's a rapport built and, and the person feels comfortable meeting with the juvenile. So it, 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 it depends. But we're not talking like weeks or months or build up. Or, this is quick. It's pretty spontaneous and very quick, yes. Is there a particular forum? You have those flashed up on the screen. Was there a particular forum that stands out where these people are going? You know, I, I, don't, I don't know we want to identify a particular app or, or forum. I think the, the most responsible thing we can do is bring several uh, to the attention of our, of our community and, and ask parents to take advantage of websites like the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children and just simply be aware of what apps are on their children's phones. Um, we've engaged these criminal defendants on more than one site in the past, so I, I don't know that one is necessarily more prevalent than, than the other. Uh, but they are able to see the, the proximity of each other while they're interacting. 
Jesus. If that makes sense. Jesus yes, sir. Clearly not. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yes. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, it's clearly not the first operation you've done on this type of thing. I mean, in three days, you've got this many you know, suspects. Are you surprised? I mean, that this is still continuing? I mean, you're, you're falling in the same trap. Yeah, no, you know, it's uh, th this is not a perfect analogy, but every time we go out and conduct a DUI checkpoint, uh, I'm hoping that our police officers come back with goose eggs, zero. You know, I, I don't want to catch drunk drivers because I don't want anyone to drive drunk, but they do. Um, the, the same kind of goes for an operation like this. Uh, in spite of our best, best efforts uh, to help educate the community, parents, uh, we're really intentional about how we interact with these criminal suspects. Uh, we tell them we're children. We tell them our age. And yet, they still solicit sex acts with, with minors. I wish they didn't, but they do. And that's why one of our 2024 resolutions is to conduct more operations like <clears throat> Operation uh, Adult Detention Center Express. Uh, the community can expect to see more of this in 2024 because our children deserve it. And as a follow-up, follow you've got many. Oh, and as a follow-up, you have a lot of tools at your disposal, and to have this beauty down here, I mean, how invaluable is to have a tool like that? It's uh, you know, w when we're dealing with the immediacy of an operation like this one, uh, there are often follow-up search warrants at at homes and businesses and and motor vehicles, and um, you know. The detective was sharing with me, you know, how often, in spite of our best efforts, efforts, patrol officers and detective, we miss things. Uh, we we miss that um, secreted burner phone, with with images of child sexual abuse material on it, because, um, you know, w w we just aren't used to finding them in the places where where they're hidden, and to to have a a dog like Delaware. Um, is, is invaluable. And I, I think as you see years go by, more and more police departments locally and nationally uh, will adopt electronic service dogs. They're, they're a real important tool you know, in our crime fighting arsenal. Is she the only one you have or are there others? So I'll, I'm going to let the detective talk about it. So she's uh, the newest version. I think we just retired one. Uh, so currently we do have two. Um, Browser is uh, our first electronic service dog, uh, detention dog. Uh, he'll be retiring at the end of the month here, and then uh, Delaware will be replacing him. And then there's a few within the, the capital region, I'll, I'll say. Would you consider this to be more of the larger operation or the largest as far as possible? No, I, I, we looked at some previous operations just a, a couple of years ago, and there have been occasions where an operation like this has resulted in more arrests than the 10 that we're announcing today. Um, but, but again, it's something it takes a, a, a lot of investigative effort and coordination. You can imagine the, the personnel it takes to, to form arrest teams and surveillance teams. And um, it's important to do, nonetheless. So we're going to do more of it in 2024. Yes, ma'am. So I'm, I'm going to pass the microphone because I don't even know what AOL chat is. So <laughs> if one of you guys can help me out. Yes, I, I think it comes back to knowing who you're talking to. Um, online, it's just like in person. You know, you wouldn't walk up to a complete stranger and just start talking about sex acts, right? And this is the same thing online. The, the opportunities on these platforms is just so great. And I think I've got two kids, uh, teenagers at home, and one of the things that we don't allow them to do is take their phone to bed with them at night because that's the prime opportunity. There's no supervision. Uh, there's hours on end where they could potentially be going on various apps to talk to people that we're not aware of and we wouldn't know. So it's just having those conversations with your children um, about all the apps in general. And those include the gaming apps. When you're playing a, a video game online, there's chat opportunities there as well that some of these predators are aware of. Um, so, so being aware of, of all these opportunities, looking on your children's phone, setting boundaries, using the, uh, the parameters that each app has to limit who your children can talk to based on their age and what's appropriate. I, I apologize if I missed it, but I'm 
Uh, no, this is this is the detectives talking with people uh, over different various uh, platforms. Do you all have any concern? Have you seen now um, AI being used to try and trick these children as I mean, that that's something that's you know always a concern um, that we have in a multitude of crimes, not just uh, child exploitation. So it's something we are on the look lookout for. It's kind of at the forefront of what it's capable of doing, but it's something we're aware of and we're always monitoring. You guys mentioned the suspect from Qatar. He didn't travel here for the interaction. He was already here. As far as I know, he was already here. He just started uh, engaging with our uh, detectives. Do you know how many have had prior contact with the, with the uh, criminal justice system? And the chief had mentioned that they, this is not the first time they've done it. Yeah, unfortunately not. And, I, and uh, that's something that you know is easily accessible to anyone using the court system. Uh, th this, court system. This, this is, well, this is one of these, these crimes that I don't think you just fully engage with someone on the first attempt. Um, most of these people, they test the waters first, right? See where I'll get them. And they work up to the nerve to meet somebody in person. Uh, I, I, I would venture to guess that this is most people's, you know, not their first go at it. But some of these suspects were arrested before? I'm sorry? Some of these uh, suspects were arrested before? Okay. Yeah, so, so it, those type of queries are, are available online. Um, we can help link you online. Yeah, and we, we can link you afterwards. But this is a crime that's, that's innate to the people who are committing them, and uh, they almost can't help themselves, which is why we are so proactive in engaging in operations like ADC Express to stop people from things that they can't stop themselves from. Chief, can you ask a, uh, can I ask an off-topic question? It has to do with a case you were talking about this morning, apparently, about a 16-year-old who was uh, yeah, caught sure. in a sexually assault an elderly woman. Sure, and, and Chantilly. And I'm happy to answer that, Paul, but just to kind of close the loop on the criminal history question. It, it's one of those topics that uh, if we answer it proactively, we invite scrutiny. If we don't answer it, we invite scrutiny. So uh, I'll, I'll, I'll say of the 10 defendants, several are known to the criminal justice system, and, and I'll let you all go from, from there. So a 16-year-old uh, knocked on, on the door of a, of a woman's home in Chantilly a couple days ago. She answered the door. He forced his way into her home. She somehow made her way to a phone, I don't know if it was a hard line or her cell phone, and she dialed 911, and before she was able to interact with the 911 call taker, the 16-year-old bad guy takes the phone from her but doesn't hang it up. So it's an open line 911 call. It's dispatched that way. Our patrol officers get to the scene, and you have to follow me on this because it's a bit surreal. So they get there, they knock on the door. She answers the door with the 16-year-old standing immediately behind her who's a, who, who is right off the bat pretending to be her grandson and trying to talk over the elderly woman at our patrol officers. Uh, this is my grandmother. I'm with her. I'm the grandson. Uh, they asked a few probing questions. Uh, I'm sure they're, they're, all their police instincts were kicking in that something doesn't really uh, fit here. And, and they were convinced pretty quickly that this guy was uh, got, you know, completely in the, in the house um, uh, where, and he shouldn't have been, and he was, he was not related to her in any way, shape, or form, and took her into custody. Uh, we know that, uh, uh, you know, and we charged him with attempted sexual assault. Um, you know, it, it certainly could have been, probably was going to be much worse if we didn't get there. And you know, I'm just grateful that these young police officers are, 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 you know, trained well enough to not turn their back on the first answer they get from someone who's pretending to be someone he's not. So really good instinctive police work the other night probably saved this woman's life. Was this completely random or has this teenager interacted with this woman? It look, at the moment, it looks like it's completely random. Do we know how old she was? Close to seven, sixty something. Yeah. We'll, we'll we'll get you. We'll get your her exact age. Close to seven. And uh, do you know if uh, he's being held? Is he juvenile? Is he, is he released? Uh, we'll follow up right afterwards. Yeah. Uh, what charge we face this person? 
Uh, I, I know he's charged with uh, breaking and entering. He's charged with an attempted sex offense, uh, probably more charges, but uh, we'll, we'll get all that for you as well. We, uh, it was covered a couple of days ago, but we're more than happy to share the information again. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes, not not a local journalist. Can you just identify? Uh, From Qatar. Yes. So just speaking of elderly victims, we had a 93-year-old woman whose home was broken into a couple weeks ago during the crime spree of the person we arrested five times in 102 days. Um, so, you know, the, and in that particular case, it could have been a lot worse as well um, so you know we just like we pay attention to our children because we they deserve our protection and our undivided attention we have to um, deliver the same type of, of service um, and attention to our to our senior community as well they're they're certainly vulnerable is there any way to get a, a demonstration on how this dog finds electronic devices no <laughs> like may, maybe not live paul we might use you as uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you going to give us your phone? Yeah, sure. no, I'm just kidding. Uh, now we'll, we'll put something together. It probably takes a little bit of an organization to put that together. But yeah. Kaylee, you have one more question. Where are these 10 men employed working with children in any way? So one, was, one was a yoga instructor. I don't believe employed... Um, with children, a construction worker, no one specifically like a school or daycare, if that's what you're asking. Yep. Anyone else? So Delaware will stay for a moment. You can pet I, Delaware. I just like to see how he can do it. That's all. Yeah. Or she. 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 Yeah. yeah. She heard you speaking and she fell asleep. <laughs> 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 Two. Delaware's too. Yeah. But so maybe you stay afterwards. Yeah. We, we, we figured when we introduced Delaware to this news conference that Delaware would quickly become the center of attention. Based on the charges, how likely do you think uh, the 10 arrested will be out? Uh, well, as of I think this morning, they're all still held on uh, no bond status. They'll have an opportunity at a bond motion to have their bond status reviewed. Um, but uh, there, there's no way, at least in my mind, that, that these men, these predators, uh, should be anywhere but behind bars uh, until they're, they're able to um, go to trial for these very serious charges. Do you know the number of arrests by the Child Exploitation Unit this year? Anything we, compared to what previous year? Yeah, we'll get that for you. So I, I can tell you, you know, and Captain Robinson was just explaining to us before, uh, earlier this morning, uh, 2023 has been a very busy year um, with these types of crimes, um, cyber crimes as well. These detectives are tasked with investigating cyber cyber crimes, um, child exploitation crimes. They're, they're a really busy small group of detectives who do a lot of great work for, for Fairfax County. And, you know, our relationships with other Northern <laughs> Virginia uh, agencies, in particular Prince William County, um, you know, th th we work together as a team. You know, the, these predators know no boundaries. Uh, they get online and and they go to where their opportunities take them. So it's not, um, it, it's it's certainly not unique to Fairfax County. Um, they 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 will travel, and commit these crimes, um, and and we just have to be committed to hold them accountable. Why do you think that is? Twenty twenty three has been busy. I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, you know, it's uh, we're still, I guess, post COVID now. I think it's safe to say we're post COVID. And you know, people are returning to work. They're returning to school. Uh, they're 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 emerging from their homes, and and maybe uh, these types of of, of meetings that, um, for one reason or another, just based on sheer uh, availability of humans, um, is now kind of back to a, a pre-COVID level. So I, I can only imagine that that might be part of it. I, I certainly don't know, but it's a concerning trend. That, that we continue to see these these predators uh, victimize our children, and we're not going to rest until until we hold all of them accountable. All right. Thank you.
All right, thank you all so much for coming out. We are going to have this post on our blog along with the other um, along with the other cases we spoke about today and these pictures if you need them. And I'll stay after for any questions. Thanks so much.